Um, I felt like the Lord uh, told me to um, uh, contribute to a documentary. And so it's a documentary called uh, Tactical Empathy uh, by uh, one of my mentors from a distance. His name is uh, Chris Voss. Chris Voss wrote a book called Never Split the Difference. And um, I read the book in the fall of 2019. I went to a two-day intensive in San Diego, California in 2020, January 2020. Uh, I just did a follow-up one-day event last year. And all of this, not last year, actually it was this year, 2022. And then, and then, um, uh, and I constantly use the techniques of tactical empathy in every single conversation I have, in every interview I do, in every uh, conversation I have with Juliet, with my kids, with 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 vendors, with with people I'm doing business with, and so. Um, and and I was going to be a homicide detective, so that stuff comes naturally to me. And just negotiation is just in my blood, you, you know. Um, resolving conflict is in my blood. So anyway, um, this opportunity came up. I, I got to give y'all a full disclosure. Yeah, this basement, we got We got to go there, okay? This opportunity came up where um, I could get an executive producer credit on this documentary. Um, and if you don't know anything about executive producers, Google them. Um, and what you'll find is that executive producers can be involved with the financing of the film, either by you know financing it themselves or... Uh, getting together with a, a, a group of people to secure financing, whether that's coming from uh, different banks, whether it's coming from different people uh, who want to support a project uh, like Spike, Spike Lee did when he uh, filmed Malcolm X. He went and hit up uh, Oprah for a million dollars. He went and hit up Michael Jordan for a million dollars. He went and hit up uh, Magic Johnson for a million dollars. Uh, I think he hit up all the MJs. He might have hit up, you know, Michael Jackson would have been alive during that time. He but but he got the film done done and um I, I feel like uh, I feel like there's something in me. I've always said about Juliet that I wanna be the executive producer of her dreams. That's what I always tell her. I'm gonna be the big executive producer of your dreams. And um uh I, I didn't know at the time, but there was something intrinsically pulling at me with this opportunity to be an executive producer on this film. Well, uh, for disclosure, it was going to be twenty five grand to be an executive producer on this film. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, to get that credit, um, it was going to be twenty five grand, and I just felt like the Lord was like, "You need to do this." So I did it. I've never done nothing like that in my entire life. Um, let's also talk about the fact that it was the easiest twenty five grand I've ever written. So God's put me in a position where. I have resources where it wasn't like it was my last twenty five thousand dollars, but I'm believing God to double it. You know what I mean? Like like I'm playing slots at a casino. You know what I mean? The kingdom of God is not a casino, fam. It's by faith. And when he's your provision, if he asks you for his money, give him his money because it's his money. And so um, so I, I paid the twenty five grand and um, me along with. How many other producers do you think were up there? 12? 13. 12 or 13? Yeah, maybe 12 or 13. But uh, it, was a, it was a pretty small crew. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it was crazy seeing you up there, bro. It was weird, That bro. was crazy. Yeah, so let me give you all the backstory to that. All right, so so we paid a, we paid a 25 grand. They give to one of them. And the 25 grand was donated to one of my favorite charities. They sent that money to... Dream Center with uh, my dear friend Matthew Barnett, uh, and and so um, I was so happy that it that it went to a worthy cause. You know what I mean? Uh, but now, boom! I got this executive producer credit. They're asking me, "Hey, how do you want your name to be on the executive producer credit?" And I felt like the Holy Spirit. I was going to put Upset the World LLC because that's my business. That's that that's what I uh, operate under. And I just felt like the Holy Spirit said, "No, Tim, this needs to be under your name." He said, I'm calling you to these spaces and I want you in these spaces. And when they ask you who you work for, then tell them who I am. And so uh, he has already done this with me in another life feels like. But er in my early 20s, when I was a um, when I was still rapping, 
the Holy Spirit told me, I want you to, you know, do this battle rap and stuff, and I want you to put out an album, but I don't want you to put Jesus in it. And I was like, oh, this has to be Satan trying to trick me into something. And I feel, I, I feel like God's really tired of me calling him Satan. Uh, <laughs> first of all, I think he's low-key, very tired of me saying that. But, but, you know, I'm like, oh, my goodness, should I be doing this? But but God but but through through battle rapping and through making this album, I got a really uh, good reputation amongst the hip hop community in DFW Metroplex back in the early two thousands, um, and I was a I was a dope MC who happened to be a believer in Jesus Christ, right? I wasn't out there like I'm a Christian rapper, First Corinthians twelve and nineteen, right? Which I don't think First Corinthians twelve has a nineteenth verse. I got to check. I don't think it does. When I said it, I don't think I've ever read a 19th. First uh, Corinthians 12 and 19. Oh, it does. Yeah, it does. It what, has. What does it say? It has 31 verses. What does 12, 19 say? Yeah. That's funny. Um, 12, 19 says, uh, how strange a body would be if it only had one part. <laughs> So let me let me tell you what I probably had in my mind. I think I had Second Corinthians. Yep. No. Yep. Oh, it has a nineteenth verse too. Okay, they both have nineteen verses. We just made it. Oh, I was thinking about Second Second Corinthians because it only has twenty one verses. So when I said nineteen, it just felt like it was long. Anyway, um, sorry y'all. You know how I get with the Bible. So, um, um. What was I saying? I You're talking about your battle rapper days. And yeah, 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 yeah. So, so I'm a believer who happens to be, uh, I'm sorry, I, I'm a rapper who happens to be a Christian. So the Holy Spirit was like, yeah, you're an executive producer. You need to put your full name. So I put my full government name, y'all, Timothy Charles Ross. It was like the Lord was like, I don't want them to be confusing Tim Ross with another Tim Ross. Timothy Charles Ross, your full name. So I put my full name on the credit and, um, that got us eight books signed by Chris, which we probably need to mail those to the to the basement dwellers. I got them at my house. I um, um, uh, got 12, uh, eight books signed by Chris. I got, um, uh, we, we, got a, we got a table, a prominent table, VIP reserved table. Um, oh, I get an hour interview with Chris. So maybe I can get him on the pod. That'd be dope. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to say, Hey, would it be impossible for you to, you know, for us to spend this time on my podcast? That would be dope. And then um, uh, also, we also get like three 30-second cameos. It was a lot that came with it. It was pretty cool. Um, but we got the credit. It gave us an opportunity to go to L.A. We stayed at the um, iconic Beverly Hilton in Beverly Hills. Marilyn Monroe stayed there. You know, a lot of famous people. That was dope. And then, um, you know, we invited some basement dwellers. Like, we, we just made a call. Hey, anybody want to do something dope in L.A.? That's how vague Hector was. Hector was like... <laughs> it was the most serial killer energy. It, dude, it, <laughs> hey, anybody want to get murdered? <laughs> anybody want to come to the basement and never be seen again? Um, he, it was the most vague ambiguous invitation of all time and like 35 people was like what's up i want to come right which is crazy hey i don't know how i want to die today but you guys seem safe i think you'll be i think you'll be very very hospitable so um we we uh we we selected five people oh, excuse me i'm gonna go to bed early tonight we selected five people and we came in there and, um, you know, we had to put on some cocktail attire. You know what I'm saying? We came in there and, um, you know, we sat down. They were playing our little basement spot. We made a little basement spot, a little trailer that comes out before the documentary came on. And, and then the host got up and did some greeting. The host did some stuff. And then he didn't seem like he did that a lot. I don't think that was his... I don't think he he was a professional hoster. I think I think he 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 
he's semi professional or he might be an amateur i don't know but he did his thing and then they played the they played the you know they they rolled the credits then they started this this documentary and you know I've never, you know, in, in the opening credits, they show, like, you know, who is directed by, da, 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 and, and they showed all these executive producers, and then my name is at the bottom, and I'm like, oh, ah, we in a whole movie, man. So that was cool, and then, you know, documentary was dope. Uh, Chris and Brandon um, are just, um, they're really good at what they do. They, they've, they've influenced a lot of organizations, a lot of corporations, a lot of mindsets, um, that book in particular, the accus the accusations audit that um, they teach you to do in negotiations is is what precipitated the biggest single breakthrough in my marriage, communicatively, in the history of our marriage. It was a technique from that from that book, tactical empathy, and applying that and specifically the accusations audit that's what brought the major breakthrough in my marriage with julia y'all got to get the book to figure it out and if you know you already know so anyway did that it was cool and then um uh after it was over you know we didn't know you know what i'm saying it was our first time at a premiere we didn't really know how to eat you know what I mean? We had flown in that day and we connected with the other people that night. We got on some cocktail attire, you know, and then we like, OK, uh, they got some like they had three di different kinds of macaroni. I didn't eat, I didn't know you could be that individualized with macaroni and cheese. They had three different kind of macaroni and cheese, y'all. Where they do that at? Who needs that much? Who needs that many options on mac and cheese? But they had three different types of macaroni. Then they was coming by with these lollipop lamb chops. Is that what they called them? Is that what that was? Dude, when I tell you <laughs> that me and this dude <laughs> grabbed maybe seven Bro, at night. Bro, <laughs> they were so Y'all looked like bone collectors. I just remember turning around. I was talking to two basement dwellers. I remember turning around. Y'all looked like y'all was about to play the xylophone. That's how many bones you had. And, and they were picked clean, fam. Y'all, y'all did, y'all were like, hey, they keep coming. I guess we just gonna keep eating them. Thank you again. Thank you again. So, listen, I'm over here hungry before they even let us in to sit down. And I'm like, I'm thinking these are appetizers. I'm thinking if this is all out here, then when we sit down at these tables, these expensive tables, there's probably going to be some like real din din. Man, my boy Jeremy, shout out to Jeremy Dixon, one of my dearest friends in the world. My boy Jeremy Dixon came to that table with a bag of popcorn and I think a Sprite. And I was like, oh, yeah, no, nah, this is. This can't be my future right now. This is terrible. So, you know, I'm looking around the table and I'm like, hey, anybody else hungry? And they looking like, oh, yeah, popcorn ain't going to do it. Like, I got off work to come here. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, because this was a this was a this was a Monday night. This wasn't on a weekend. So, you know, we watched the thing. And, and when it was over, that that's when it got crazy because the director came back up and uh, Nick Noor, I think his name is. And 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 uh, he was like, I want all the executive producers to come up. And I was like, oh my gosh, my introversion was flaring at this point. I'm like, hide me in the back. Why you? Why do you even want me to come up there? Um, but actually, you made you made an observation, Sammy, that I thought was very very insightful. Would you share that? Absolutely. Yeah, dude, you hit that stage, and it was uh, just watching your body language. And you had your arms behind your back mm -hmm. and you kind of were standing off to the side of the stage, tipped behind like other people. And about midway through it, because they kept you on the stage for a while. Yeah, they did. They it was awkward. It was painful, bro. They knew the Lord had something he was working on. Oh, he, <laughs> it, it, and, and, and yeah, keep going. Keep going. <laughs> and so... Um, about midway through, dude, you, you pulled your arms out and you put them in the front. Like, a, you know what? No, we're here. Yeah. We're going to be here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 
you about to get this name. Yeah, like, yeah, you, yeah, yeah, you for about sure. To, you about to know. Yeah. That's where I'm at. Yeah, bro. absolutely. Bro, it was an entire shift for you. Yeah, yeah, it was. And I remember standing up there and I was very, very timid. And then you're right, that body, that body posture changed and, and I, I just felt like, no, I belong up here. I'm not going to be over here like, <laughs> no, I was like, no, I belong here. I paid the money you paid. I belong up here with you. You know what I mean? And I felt like the Holy Spirit said something to me when I was standing there after my, after my posture changed. And he just said, uh, I'm going to give you a lot of money so you can produce a lot of things. Correction. I'm going to give you a lot of money so you can executive produce a lot of things. Those were his exact words. I'm going to give you a lot of money so you can executive produce a lot of things. And I was like, yo, amen. Like, thank you, Jesus. If they, you like it, I love it, you know. So that was really, that, that was really cool. But afterwards, man, um, you know, I was in a penthouse suite, you know. And so I invited everybody up, all of us in the basement dwellers back up, back up to the room. We ordered room service. And we sat around to like 1230 in the morning just like, talking about the faithfulness of God. And it was basically a basement dweller dinner. It was a dweller dinner. Yeah. Oh, oh write that down, fellas. Maybe maybe basement dweller Coming dinner. Coming to a city near you. <laughs> Coming to a city near you. Dweller dinners. Um, um, no, we had a great time, man. And, and um, it, was really, it was really special. It felt really good. And then... Um, Yo, the next morning, Tuesday morning, I get my Bible and uh, I have my devotion time in a penthouse suite overlooking the Beverly Hills, right? And um, I got to read what I read because it was so, um, it caught me by surprise and I just started crying. So this would have been, uh, oh, so so this is Proverbs 11. So I read the whole, whole chapter and, and let me tell you something, Proverbs hits different. If you read it every day for the rest of your life, one chapter a day for the rest of your life, according to the day of the month it is, it doesn't even matter. This will hit you different for the rest of your life. So Proverbs 11, um, verses 24 and 25, uh, give freely and become more wealthy, be stingy and lose everything. The generous will prosper. Those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. And as soon as I read that, I feel like the Holy Spirit said, do you not think I saw what you did for those people last night? He said, you refresh them, I'm going to refresh you. I just started crying. I'm like, I don't even know what that means, man. Thank you so much. 